today's episode, I'm going to speak to Jolt Argelan. Jolt is a very interesting, jazzy guy. He loves, loves what he's doing, and he's been around the world while doing so. He's going to acquaint us a bit with his musical journey, with his creative inspiration, what came in the past, what is in store for him in the future, and some random topics here and there. Hopefully you will take something from this conversation because I really enjoyed speaking to him. Let's go step it together. Hello everyone, thank you very much for being with us with the Stellar Sound podcast for yet another episode. Many greetings from me, your host Radina from the Netherlands at the moment. It's a lovely June evening. It's very, very warm and sunny, which is just what we need here in the Netherlands, I would say, with all these uh, rains all the time. And tonight I'm really happy that I'm going to be speaking with Jolt Argelan. I said I will not say the family name, but I did still. So please <laughs> nice. don't. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't that bad, right? <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> it wasn't super bad. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we're going to be speaking with Jolt about his musical journey and not only the music, of course, whatever happens, whatever we feel is interesting and we want to speak about. Um, Jolt, First, um, what we like to do is we like to start with an icebreaker question. Okay. Our previous guest, Alexandra Denda, I think uh, you heard about her before. She has a very nice icebreaker question that she likes to ask her own students because she also teaches. Mm -hmm. And her question to you is, what is your favorite animal? Oh. Wow, my favorite animal. Yeah, that's um, definitely a panda and uh, Akita dog. (laughs) These two guys, yeah. Akita dog and uh, panda. I'm really, like, I love those animals. I hope once I will have one. I mean, Akita dog, that's more definitely (laughs) more realistic than the panda. Not the panda. (laughs) Yeah, I I hope maybe panda, like, who knows? (laughs) But that's a bit difficult. Maybe you can adopt a panda. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. that would be really, really amazing and beautiful. Yeah, Why do you like uh, the pandas so much? Because I found them extremely uh, cute <laughs> and extremely <laughs> sweet. Yeah, yeah sweet. I sometimes when I uh, have some uh, bad days, then I'm just watching uh, videos with panda, uh, um, pandas, and yeah, they're really in Ch- in China, like how people uh, are playing with them like they're, they're literally like kids and yeah yes. that's why i found them very uh, sweet creatures <laughs> yeah they look really sweet indeed and there are so many videos of them rolling around or being <laughs> exactly, funny yeah. in some way they're, they're yeah, lovely yeah. and the akita dog um why is yeah. that a favorite uh, one that is just uh, happened um when i was um um Living here, uh, I live here in Groningen, and uh, I saw once in the neighborhood a um, guy with with a kita dog, and I asked the guy like, "What's the name of uh, this dog? <laughs> Just beautiful." <laughs> and yeah, then I found out that they're yeah, it's Akita dogs, basically Japanese huskies. Yeah. And, um, uh, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, and especially especially the ginger ones. I really like. I oh, really they're them cute. Beautiful. They are cute. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they it's also very nice. important. I heard that it's uh, important to uh, train them also very well because they could be very jealous and aggressive with other dogs. They they love cats, but with mm-hmm. other uh, dogs they could be very tricky, and that's why it's uh, very important to train them to be very uh, careful with training. And uh, yeah, it's and also a Shiba. It's the same dog basically, but uh, smaller. Shiba, yeah, Shiba. Yeah, they're Shiba also, Inu yeah, is the smaller. Exactly, the smaller yeah, yeah. breed. <laughs> but Jot, are you in in Groningen? Uh, yes, indeed, uh, I'm in Groningen. Yeah. Oh, okay, I, okay. I was going to you? ask you about that. Uh, I'm in Den Bosch. At oh, the okay. Moment, speaking to you from Den Bosch. So. Oh right, I see. 
same country, but not that close. Yeah, south and north, indeed. South and north, indeed. But uh, Jot, I would really like to get to know a bit more about you because I have seen so much about how well how much you're doing you're a trumpet player but you're also a producer you're also a composer also a dj so it's almost a jack of all trades um what comes first uh what comes first yeah the, i that's definitely that would be the trumpet playing uh but uh, since yeah the, since the pandemics uh, uh, are happening then I didn't have really a chance to uh, play and that's why um, yeah, then I started to produce a lot and to um, make electronic music um, and so I, I just finished my first electronic EP um, oh, wow. which, which uh, has uh, four, uh, four songs so I was really into producing and um, and uh, mixing in the last uh, period. Of course, I play some trumpets on the in the songs, but um, of course, it, yeah, that that was kind of uh, my focus. Like this time, not the uh, trumpet playing, even though of course I was practicing uh, because it's like sports. You know, you, you have to mm -hmm. practice in order to keep the shape. So, but yeah, keep I didn't have any yeah. chance to play. So the only thing was the recording uh, trumpet uh, lines. And yeah, and in this album, when I was creating music with my uh, previous bands, and when I was composing, uh, doing music, it was always the like the electronic part was always kind of a part of it, part of the music. Mm -hmm. um, I always played this kind of music where the electronic elements were around, and uh, like it could be like the drum set, the hybrid drum set or electronic keyboards. And also I was using effects for uh, pedal effects for my trumpet, um, samples, etc. But now on this, um, in this EP, it's like, it's um, an opposite. So it's basically electronic music with live, uh, with elements of live uh, instruments. So live vocals in few songs, uh, live yeah. trumpet solos. Uh, live drums here and there so it's but it's the focus is definitely like it's electronic uh, uh, focus music. is electronic yes and then yeah. you add some elements to to that exactly yeah okay but how did it start with the trumpet playing how did you choose that yeah that was uh yeah how old was i I'm not even counting anymore <laughs> <laughs> But I was in elementary school for sure, I think around uh, my fourth grade, third or fourth grade. And then um, I went with my father to this uh, trumpet teacher because he heard a lot of uh, interesting things about uh, him because he had a um, student in, he's a teacher, he was a teacher mm -hmm. back in them, history teacher, and uh, he had a student who was always late. From class and then he asked like why, why are you late always and then the kid said yeah because I'm ha I'm having trumpet lessons and they're always like super long much longer than it's supposed to be Whoa. so my father went uh, with me to check it out is it true or not <laughs> and when we went there and when I met um, Dubarko Markovic that was his name my first trumpet teacher mm -hmm. um, we we went to uh, to the lesson of this guy this kid and we basically stayed there for the whole afternoon. <laughs> so it was definitely true <laughs> that he likes to talk and to show things, and uh, and that's how basically it started. Yeah, and, then, and, and that, from that moment, uh, that continued. Yeah, yeah. And every trumpet lesson was basically, yeah, a whole afternoon uh, for hours, and then we get together with other kids, and yeah, he's talking. Then we are playing. So that's how it started, and. Um, then I went to a music uh, high school of music, classical mm -hmm. trumpet, uh, and then I met with uh, uh, jazz music when I was in my second or second year there. And from that moment, I was completely in love with uh, with jazz, and mm, I knew that. Yeah, it was um, a jazz workshop um, uh, during the jazz festival in Novi Sad, my hometown. So very yeah. nice uh, jazz festival. 
and with a quite big tradition. And mm -hmm. they always, uh, there are always workshops uh, during the festival, and yeah, we went to one of uh, the workshops, and I remember that I, I was completely like, wow, this is a totally new <laughs> universe, and. Mm -hmm. uh, there were these guys from uh, Germany, Uwe Platt, uh, um, great saxophone player, and Ryan Carniau, um, originally from Canada, but he lives in Cologne. He teaches there, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, from that moment, those were my first uh, jazz mentors. And from that moment, I was completely, yeah, I decided that I will go for jazz music. And it's still changing. Yeah, my music um, journey is always yeah getting new shapes and changing but yeah basically that that's my um, native uh, language the jazz music and then from that the yeah i speak music. other dialects uh, as well <laughs> yeah no that uh, completely makes sense and especially when i look uh, back to december last year i understand that you got your master of music then in new york jazz uh, uh, yes, actually, I've graduated uh, a year ago, in July uh, last year, but mm -hmm. then the diploma arrived um, yeah. uh, later. And yes, uh, yeah, I finished here in Groningen uh, with my bachelor of studies, uh, jazz, uh, trumpet, and then I also started my master studies here, because there is this uh, beautiful um, uh, thing about the master program here in Groningen that uh, one semester you you have to do uh, one semester you're going to new york basically the third semester well, and then you, you spend one new semester york. in new york yeah yes in um, mm -hmm. yeah last year uh, 2019 yeah for one semester september until end of oh, uh, january oh you must have a lot to tell about this experience <laughs> yeah tell us a bit about yes. this yeah it's um um yeah definitely it was a beautiful beautiful uh, experience and um, also it was very hard um, uh, after that because we have our group our master group it was like 12 of us or maybe yeah plus minus yeah around 12 and we spent there this um, yeah few months there in new york and yeah, new york is the capital city of jazz music yeah and uh, and other things as well of course mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, our dream was definitely to live yeah, at one point uh, then to see the, the scene there, what is happening and um, and uh, to go all, to all these crazy concerts where in small clubs, uh, world famous jazz players would play. Those players, we are listening uh, them here in Europe on week festivals, venues, right? And they are mm -hmm. just playing in a small club with five tables and uh, then you, you have a chance to talk to them uh, later after the gig to hang with them. So, yeah, that's much more um, uh, intimate situation. Intimate, yeah, yeah exactly. And... It makes me think of these old noir movies where yeah. they, you know, are sitting in a bar with smoke all around him yeah. and just a couple of people enjoying very intimate performances. That's basically the same thing is happening still now, except the smoke. Except the smoke. The smoke. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, the smokers are banned from everywhere, basically. So it's uh, really uh, not happening. So the, <laughs> this part yeah, of yeah. the vibe is uh, not happening anymore. But the rest, yes, super late uh, gigs, uh, sets, uh, late mm. jam sessions. So it's really like New York is um, living during the night. That's absolutely true. After experiencing all these things, where uh, yeah, meeting with a lot of pl uh, players and uh, one of the also very nice things what the school did, I mean the conservatorium, that uh, we got an amount of money to spend this money for uh, lessons, private lessons with um, mm. with anybody we want. Wow. And it could be, of course, a trumpet player or a double bass player, or a piano player, or a producer, or yeah, or whatever. And that money you get spent on those private lessons. So basically, yeah, that, that was really a beautiful thing that we can just call those um, amazing musicians and uh, meet them and get lessons from them. So I had some yeah, beautiful trumpet lessons, even uh, lessons for producing. 
So yeah. it's uh, there I started with these uh, these things. So who it, did it, you it, choose? Sorry to interrupt you. Who <laughs> did you choose? Uh, yeah, I, um, I had a lesson with uh, Mike Maher. He's uh, the trumpet player from Snarky Puppy. <gasps> Snarky um, Puppy, really? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it was amazing trumpet player. Then uh, Joe Magnarelli, um, a great uh, bebop uh, jazz uh, trumpet player. I met him already in the conservatorium here because he was one of the guest uh, USA teachers. Guest we also have lecture. guest USA teachers, mm. yes, every week. And he was, uh, when he was around, I was his uh, assistant. So I met him um, there again. Great uh, jazz trumpet player. Uh, then um, Kenny Rampton the trumpet player from uh, Marsalis's Lincoln Jazz Orchestra. Um, that was also a beautiful uh, uh, lesson. Then Dave Rogers uh, from New Jersey, he's yeah, one of these uh, Broadway uh, big band um, trumpet uh, mm -hmm. le legends. Um, great uh, person for yeah, these trumpet technique uh, things and, uh, and uh, similar stuff. So. Uh, yeah, these these trumpet players, I believe. It sounds very yeah. varied because everyone, every different player, comes with their own specialty, yeah. so to speak. So you were able to touch upon each person's specialty in a way. Exactly, exactly. That's wow. um, that that was yeah. really really uh, a nice and important thing. Plus, yeah, going to all these concerts and jam sessions, and also I'm into hip hop music and neo soul a lot. And we were going to these uh, weekly uh, neo soul hip hop jam sessions with like local young players. Mm -hmm. uh, meet a lot of people every night, and uh, and also a famous player would come around and uh, join the session as well. So that's really amazing as well. There that you never know who can. Um, uh, city. Pop up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, the, and after that, after this amazing uh, period and experience, all of us in the master's group were like totally, bo uh, we had this boost and drive and to like full with uh, experience and energy. And we were ready to conquer <laughs> uh, <laughs> Europe. Uh, and yeah. after, after we came back and then this uh, corona happened. <laughs> so and this corona was... happened. Yeah, exactly. I was, just, yeah, was... I was just going to ask you about this and you, you linked it so well to what you yeah. were saying. Right. The experience that you had there, it was so bombastic from what I hear. Uh, so many varied experiences, little things here and there, and then corona hits. And how did that impact you? Um, how did you deal with that? Yeah, that was, I mean, the, at the beginning, nobody knew, right, what's going to happen. Yeah. Nobody. I was. I didn't expect. I was sure that everything will be okay until the summer, and that we will even have a final graduation concerts. You know, and, mm -hmm. that, and that part is also um, like the most important part of your studies when you have the, your graduation concert and this kind of. Of course, good, and good you're looking party. forward. Yeah, your family would come maybe, or your, all your friends, and uh, and stuff is like a nice ending. Yeah. Year, and I was sure, yeah, until the summer for sure it's gonna be okay. And then it was not just until the summer; it was a year more. So yeah, in the beginning we were confused, and but definitely it was a, a deal breaker that we couldn't play. But also, it's it had a nice side that everybody started to um, to do some stuff they never had the uh, time before. Yeah, so, definitely. I mean, it's it was extremely. I, I really have to say that all, almost all of my friends are musicians, right? And uh, yeah, it's indeed extremely challenging, extremely extremely challenging. Also to get you know the motivation to practice, but you see mm -hmm. that there are no concerts happening, and why would you practice when you know when, when it's impossible to play? But then, yeah, people would uh, compose at home, record. Yeah. Albums uh, and yeah, produce or yeah, do whatever. So for this thing, it was nice that I really uh, produce. Uh, I was producing a lot of music, mm -hmm. um, learned a lot of things, um, things I never never had time before. So yeah, that was also an amazing um, 
experience. Yeah, in your own EP, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the crown. Uh, of, uh, <laughs> the cherry of, on top. <laughs> exactly, uh, this period. Um, so it's just, um, now. Uh, I hope now it's already, uh, um, I also found a label. So now these bureaucratic uh, things <laughs> has to be passed and I hope I will know the release date uh, very soon. Oh, very good. Looking forward to, to that and to listening to it. Um, because this past year you had to transform what was happening to you and to the rest of the world in some form of inspiration. So I'm also curious to know more about how that influenced your creative process for your EP creation. And did it actually influence the, the way your music sounds? Um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm not sure about that, but, um, yeah, when I'm, uh, creating music, it's, I'm, I'm always going, uh, for shapes and for a certain, yeah, uh, emotional, um, uh, statement and mm -hmm. when I'm writing, uh, uh, this music and I have to say that the music, this, uh, what I wrote for this EP is very similar the music uh, I was playing in the past few years was still uh, different. So it's uh, different because it was more electronic and uh, stuff. But if like um, the all the bands uh, I had in the past uh, few years, like the, this music is super connected uh, to it. But since yeah, because of the pandemics. I couldn't yeah. play, I couldn't go to concerts. And mm -hmm. when I was visiting, attending concerts, that was my main inspiration. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can recognize this, yeah. Yeah, the time when I'm really getting um, um, the, the power of the inspiration and, and then I would go home or even during the concert, I would go to the toilet and sing a melody to my phone or, or a reason <laughs> better. Yeah, you or, don't want to miss it. Exactly it, because yeah, yeah. I, I learned it that I have immediate I have to do it immediately otherwise yes. it's gonna yeah, yeah it's, it's gone yeah yeah that's one hundred percent and uh, yeah and that that was not happening so um, uh, then I was uh, I went um, into the music scene uh, uh, in London which is like this electronic broken beat uh, and uh, deep uh, house scene. Um, and I was already uh, really into the London music scene before that, all these acid jazz and uh, new jazz artists. So I was really checking out uh, a lot of musicians from London and also my music was really um, uh, close to this uh, music scene, London mm -hmm. music scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, because of yeah, the situation, I started to go like yeah, similar music, but um, with DJs this broken, especially the broken beat uh, uh, part. So that was kind of also my big inspiration now uh, for my electronic EP when I was listening uh, first time in my life, uh, not musicians, but uh, this broken beat uh, electronic uh, producers, DJs. Um, yeah. So yeah, this, this, this kind of uh, things definitely. Um, what is it that uh, you are going for with your music? Um, I mean, in emotional statement kind of way. What is it that you want to convey to people? Um, it's a tricky one. Um, when I'm when I'm writing music, it's uh, it's always uh, um, connected with uh, my, uh, it could be um, or romantic or nostalgic, but it's, it's usually, um, I have to say that it's usually a bit, uh, uh, sometimes even darker or a bit uh, mm -hmm. mysterious. Uh, so it's, and also when I'm composing, I always um, going for colors, right? And, uh, I never write a uh, functional uh, um, when I writing the, the changes. Um, I never write functional um, chords. I'm always going for um, colors. 
And tell uh, more about tell more about this concept when you say colors. Yeah, it's I'm going like let's say that um, usually I'm doing it uh, in late uh, night evenings. So this mm -hmm. kind of statement when you are you know late night evening and um, uh, sitting and writing music or 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 you feel nostalgic or yeah. you f or your heart is uh, broken or um, or you or you feel the love <laughs> then it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I'm going for usually for those colors and uh, also the harmony I'm writing they are usually more um, uh, darker I should say uh, so for these go darker colors, which in yeah. music terms it means uh, that I'm using uh, minor chords a lot, or this um, uh, minor um, um, yeah. vibe is much more than the bright uh, major or, or other brighter uh, chords or, or melodies, of course. Yes, yeah. So I think that's really my um, um, my thing or my style. And it's happening uh, since actually uh, since I started to um, play jazz. Even when I started to to play jazz, next to my yeah, jazz heroes as an 18 years old, uh, teenager, mm -hmm. 17 years old teenager, I always had this other side that I was listening to uh, as well, and that was um, acid jazz, uh, Jamir Kwai, acid jazz. Or, mm -hmm. or incognito, and or brand new heavy. So again, the London scene. And even there, or uh, El Kyoto Jazz Massive, or Jazz Anoa, and those uh, guys are already like this, they have this a bit more, this darker, minor uh, vibe in their music, like uh, Rhodes, uh, Fender Rhodes sounds. And um, um, and I already started to miss, uh, listen to this kind of music then. Yeah. When I, was, when I was 18, and then it was, yeah, from there I went to... Um, Robert Glasper, which was this yeah, hip hop, neo soul, jazzy thing, but also I found a lot of simil similarities uh, in his music. Um, uh, I heard yeah, these colors uh, in his music a lot, and I'm talking about his double booked uh, album era, so 2000, uh, end of 2000s, I believe. 2009 mm, I need to check this one. I need to check yeah. this one uh, out, uh, but I understand then that ever since you started, so when you were 18, you said this whole color has been part of your listening definitely. journey and also composing journey. Yeah, yeah. Did you definitely. start, uh, did you actually start composing at the very beginning when you also started listening to that type um, of music? Not immediately. I mean, but basically, yeah, if I think about it like this, then yes, because when I was practicing, uh, after listening this kind of music, of course, I would come uh, uh, come up with uh, my own melodies. <laughs> yeah. Or when I was practicing uh, impro and basic improvisation is also uh, some kind of uh, like a way or the process is basically composing. If yes. you are not playing the licks, you are, uh, the patterns you are practicing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still plant, going... I mean. uh... Yeah, yeah, it's still turning. The ideas are turning in yeah, your head. Yeah, of course. If yeah, if when I was, um, uh, of course, we have to learn the the licks and the scales and all these uh, technical uh, things to transcribing other musicians and stuff. But yeah, when it starts to happen just spontaneously without thinking, yeah, that's that part. It's already uh, could be the. Com com composing basically right yeah. and uh, what i wanted to uh, say uh, that yeah I, already then i started to come up with um, uh, this my own uh, melo uh, lines or melodies but uh, um, my first complete song what i finished it was already in budapest because i went to budapest also for four years to study uh, music after my um, after i finished my high school of music and there there was the yeah the first song i uh, Finished, but I also played with uh, my project band, the project in Ever Live, but in a rehearsal room. <laughs>
As usual, taking a moment to thank our sponsor for today's episode, and it's the wonderful Alexandra from Cats Accessories. She's a Serbian designer who uses entirely recycled material for her pieces. I have one brooch from her and I have to say it not only is light and looking amazing but it also smells amazing. I don't know what that is but the scent is so special. She is definitely somebody to check out and if you can buy something from her you're contributing to a more sustainable future so check out Kets Accessories on Instagram. That is Kets, K-E-T-Z, Kets Accessories. So what is your view right now on the popular music that's on the rotation? Any favorite artists? I have to say that uh, lately I'm not really um, um, following like the mainstream mainstream um, music, but uh, I was I was once I was talking a few years ago I was talking to my um, musician friend and. Uh, he was so upset about the amazing music today. He was really upset, and he said that it, it cannot go uh, uh, worse. Than the, the, yeah, worse. Exactly. It needs something needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Something needs to happen to you know just start from the beginning again, like yeah. after a, a war or something, you know. And uh, <laughs> and and now when this pandemic when pandemic happened, happened, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I was wow. I remember this uh, uh, conversation. I said maybe that. That, that's the uh, the, <laughs> the sign reset that is button. the reset button, but definitely uh, it's uh, it's really crazy now at the mo at the moment with with the music and there are so many um, um, so many new things happening in new music and information for people. It's also very hard to you know uh, get um, uh, new music and not to get new music is super easy now to. To, to pick to, out maybe but to because pick, yeah, so exactly. much has been done yeah. exactly and to, or to focus or to have concentration for for new music and absolutely new, yeah. new information so i remember when i started to listen uh, and that's why for that's why i like to um, uh, search always to put a music in a music style i know that some people they don't like it i i started to do that because of one say a uh, very simple reason because in this period when i was in my high school 2006 7 8 it was really really hard to find new music right and for me the most easier easiest way was to yeah find out with this um, artist what kind of music is he playing what's the genre mm -hmm. and if i find one once the genre then i can go for other to find discover other artists as well. Yeah, and the, and it was even huge, even YouTube. Yeah, it came around uh, in that uh, period, two thousand six, I believe, five six or something like that. But it was still hard uh, because it uh, didn't have these algorithms. You know, the the yes the suggested yeah. uh, or now suggested I recommended mixed. Yeah, you recommend exactly. Now it has this also your own mix or Spotify has. The, crazy algorithms as well and then you are getting uh, new recommendations constantly which is super nice and that's why it's extremely easy now to uh, find new music but the bad thing is that people they don't have concentration at all uh, anymore like not like before because there are so many things happening and I also mm, I yeah. recognize when, yeah. I, when I post something it's um, it's not even I mean everybody's doing singles now uh, that's for sure, or EPs, Max, but nobody is curious anymore, unfortunately. But albums, every album had a story, uh, but albums are not really um, happening anymore, but singles, big time. Mm, and, it um, seems seems like it, yeah, that it's really hard to, hmm, how should I say it, to poke out of the noise, <laughs> to, to get your nose out of the noise yeah, of all definitely. the music, yeah, and stick definitely, out of it. Definitely. Yeah, it's yeah. and also people. People are like when they're listening to music. I recognize also when I'm um, hanging with uh, non-musician uh, people. I see that you know the equipment where you are listening to music. The people are not. They don't have any more like nice uh, headphones or nice speakers. They are just you know listening the music from the laptops or from the phone, which is which oh. you know, <laughs> you're missing the seventy percent of the, yes. the music like like that. So it's. Um, 
and also I recognize when I'm post posting uh, something uh, that people when YouTube came around they were like these music videos were super popular but they don't have uh, people they don't have uh, even um, concentration to check out one song of three minutes now they're like Instagram um, Posts yeah, that minute. is quite scary, quite scary, uh, because Indeed. it's uh, like a whole culture of, or this phenomenon, negative phenomenon of not being able to focus your attention long enough yeah. to really get into what you're reading, right. listening, whatever that is. Um, there was this guy, oh, I'm so sorry that I forgot his name right now, but he had a whole talk about how people should tr at least try to minimize their social media use mm -hmm. for the sake of their brains and yeah. how much their attention actually is the almost, an, uh, I don't know, a couple of seconds of focused attention, which used right. to be minutes or even, you know, hours. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely true, and I, I see it every day. It's, and even it's not anymore like the uh, the Instagram post, which is like uh, has the most attention. Now it's now there are even like less the stories, which is like there are 15 seconds, I I believe. Mm -hmm. And people, they I also I recognize that when I post something, I have more reactions uh, on the stories than on the post because the actual just, post they, they don't have even a concentration for a post of one minute, but just you know. So, sliding the the instagram stories of 15 seconds and they from those 15 seconds they maybe check out five six stops so it's really difficult that i also i there is a nice story regard of this um, when i was celebrating my 18th uh, birthday mm -hmm. i uh, um i rented uh, i rented a, a this, like small club and i was preparing music um for days before the before my birthday uh, making these compilations, you know, MP3 CDs, and really, I did a really serious uh, preparation for that. Like, I picked hundreds of uh, songs and tunes, and uh, then the party started. And apparently, there was a computer, and on the computer there was internet, and also there was YouTube, <laughs> and people started to. I put, already uh, imagined songs. what you're going yeah, to say. I was. I was shocked and I was so sad and yeah and, and from that moment I realized yeah this is changing now totally like this not it's not happening anymore if you would go to somebody's place or a party and okay what kind of uh, vinyls you have or CDs or tapes you have let's listen to that or I will bring some I just completely like jungle everybody's mm -hmm. uh, putting uh, music, music and yeah then from 2000 end of 2000 that's definitely changed and yeah people they just um don't have uh, the concentration to focus on on the on the music or other things as well of course but at least it's uh, yeah it's easier to find new music so it's it has the good and bad sides as well yes advantages and disadvantages as with everything um, right. but um, according to you do you believe that there is any value in let's say going back to the classics or the older time artists in order to have inspiration for the future? Uh, you mean uh, for us musicians? Yeah, and for you personally? Yeah, um, always. Yeah, that's. I'm. Uh, I'm um, a musician. I, I guess almost everybody is like that. That I'm constantly searching for uh, for new music and for new inspiration. And that's how also my uh, musical uh, journey and um, language is getting all the new shapes and uh, 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 dialects uh, constantly. And of course, I have my... Uh, the, uh, everybody needs to do uh, the homework to check out the, the, the old musicians and um, the first frontliners. Mm -hmm. that's like that's um that's everybody should do that mandatory that's <laughs> mandatory yeah it's yeah that, that's just that's it but um and yeah i know uh, players 
that they would uh, play music which is already overplayed um, 50 years ago and that's also totally legit but also i'm no players i know musicians they are constantly searching for new music and they constantly want to uh, create something new um, and yeah that's that's almost in the last few months as i said that i was listening more this uh, electronic uh, producers djs but um, when I was um, you know, younger, when I was a teenager, I was constantly listening to the old, 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 old guys uh, from the 40s, 50s. Um, so it's, I think it's really important to to do the homework and to check out uh, uh, check out musicians from before, but also the musicians now because I I know a lot of uh, people at home. Especially at home, like not really. Well, of course, for sure, here they are also here in the Netherlands or, mm -hmm. or or in New York City. But especially, I I this I found out at home that uh, there are a lot of players that they are not checking this. The, you know, they are not checking out the new players at all. So mm -hmm. Yeah. For them, like until the eighties, nineties, and tops, and that's it. But they are amazing. Uh, every day, they are like new amazing players are coming out from the shed and they are just crazy and great musicians and or they are composing great music and yeah. it's really happening yeah. so it's also i think it's also important to check out around you what is happening at the moment mm -hmm. and it could be yeah. any any genre any your any environment kind of yeah what is what is going on what is right. what is really current is also right. important to check big time yeah Would you say that you do have, in general, favorite music genres, or is it hard to make a distinction nowadays between the genre genres because they are all so intertwined? Yes, yeah, it, you are totally right. It's indeed uh, harder uh, today to put them um, under one wing. I mean, put put music under a wing of a genre, genre but uh, I still. Uh, uh, doing that or trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, from that acid jazz, uh, new jazz period, um, my taste uh, went to... Um, uh, or actually, actually, my first, um, to be honest, uh, I also have to mention this, that my first genre, uh, genre which is connected with jazz, what I liked, because, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I, was not, I was kind of a rock uh, head. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. I was listening to rock music, but before I start to play uh, professionally music, uh, so my elementary school and and when uh, when I started to listen jazz like jazz, uh, the change was too radical for me. So I, had <laughs> I can to, imagine. I play playing vice, yes, I, I loved it, but to listen at home, it was yeah, it was um, too hard to listen Charlie Parker uh, after. Mm -hmm. Rage Against the Machine, so it. <laughs> so well, why I not? Started... I would. I would like that. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course. Now, to now each I their own. Also, yeah. Yeah. Now it also I could listen really anything, uh, uh, but then like uh, as a, as a teenager it was hard. So I started to listen first um, this uh, the, the fusion jazz uh, artists and not even Weather Report or Miles Davis, Miles Davis, Bridges Brew. Or Mahavishnu Orchestra or Return to Forever, but first really mm -hmm. like this, like uh, Chikori Electric Band, Dave Vehicle, uh, Herbie. So this um, groovy fusion, and then the bit more hardcore uh, fusion, and then the jazz jazz. So that was my first, um, uh, my first um, connections um, with jazz, and then yeah, then the acid jazz and new jazz. Um, came around in my life and from there in Budapest I uh, um, I went to yeah, I found out uh, I heard about Robert Glasper and I was totally uh, in love with his music because uh, in that period uh, the music he uh, may uh, he was making in that period was really uh, I really liked it it was really close to me so this neo soul uh, Hip hop, but with also elements of new jazz. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I went to those uh, waters, and um, 
and uh, because of Robert Glasper also found out uh, about one of my still one of my biggest uh, inspirations, uh, the producer Jay Dilla, legendary uh, hip hop uh, producer, and, uh, who basically uh, Neo Soul uh, happened uh, basically because of him, and he people started to uh, play different. Like uh, great musicians, uh, um, like Westlove or Chris Day, because of him, yeah. or Robert Glasper. So he was also a big inspiration for for uh, famous um, jazz players. Uh, and so I had this uh, hip hop neo soul um, period for quite some time, for a few years. And um, yeah, then I also discovered the LA uh, scene, like Thundercat and Flying Lotus. Mm, yeah. Or Nover, I call it like the hipster jazz. <laughs> or the West Coast yeah. jazz. You could so say that. Yeah. So that was also definitely um, um, around in my uh, uh, musical life. And then I started to uh, discover uh, the London scene that I already mentioned. So yes. I came back to the London scene. But the new generation. Uh, so like yeah, Jamir Kwai, Incognito, Benny Heavies, mm -hmm. um, these cats were around in the nineties and two um, thousands, mm. and and there is in London there is a huge, huge, crazy music scene over there now at the moment. And and only, uh, only yesterday I was listening to Jamir Kwai. I think it was uh, what was it, uh, Cosmic Girl. Oh, yeah, <laughs> She's yeah, just yeah, a yeah. cosmic girl. Yeah, Classic I really one, yeah. love love this song. All of his songs, of course, I uh, really yeah. like. But um, there was this short video of him. I believe it was recorded at the beginning of the pandemic. So mm -hmm. last March. And he was just singing something very casually and basically saying, this will be over in three months. Yeah, but oh, it was. Wow. No. <laughs> Ouch, yeah, yeah, it's it not. not Wow, yeah, oh, that's I'm sorry. There is a motorcycle from outside. Uh -huh. uh, just yeah, passed. Um, yeah. What I wanted to see yeah, about the London uh, scene, it's there are so many great positions. Uh, the, like my next day, and that was the my new trigger. It happened, I think, in 2016, 15, and I still, um, I'm still in that kind of uh, vibe. I believe that was when I heard uh, this. Duo debut album of Yusuf Kamal, with the uh, drummer Yusuf Days and uh, Kamal Williams, the key, uh, piano keyboard player. They had this crazy album, but again, it had everything what I like: the shape of the melodies, the harmony, mm -hmm. the, the rhythm, the grooves. So it was really, really everything uh, I liked at that moment. Can Unfortunately, you... they're not. Uh, yeah, yes. Oh, sorry. yeah, sorry. Can you recommend, when I'm listening to you speaking about this, I have to ask you, can you recommend a song that you personally wish that you had written yourself? From that album, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even I was even thinking about it. I was sure, like, wow, these guys uh, wrote this song. I, I'm sure that I would write a same song uh, in a few years. Yeah. Or, or at one point, at least. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because it's really my... Uh, my vibe day, yeah, that's the song from that album, Black Focus is the name of this um, um, great uh, uh, masterpiece. And Black from Focus. That album, yeah, that's the name of the album. And uh, yeah, my favorite song from the album is uh, Strings of Light. Yeah, that's really, uh, that song is... Strings me, of uh, Light. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Beautiful uh, synth uh, um, uh, sounds, uh, uh, crazy beautiful gro grooves from um, Yusuf Days. Also, there are horns uh, over there. Great uh, trumpet player. Um, I forgot his name. I think he's originally from Cuba. but I forgot his name. He's really an amazing, uh, great trumpet player and also using like effects, uh, nice effects for trumpet. So yeah, definitely uh, that was also something uh, which inspired me a lot. And, and then there are all these other players like Joe Armon Jones from London and um, Nubaya Garcia and uh, Soveto Kinch and, and uh, this band called Ezra Collective. Um, then yeah, 
to like uh, there are so many names it's always difficult for me when I want to say <laughs> a lot of to names remember yeah I just then I just uh, blog but there are like many other musicians as well there and also producers um, they are playing um, yeah this kind of um, music so in at the moment I'm in that uh, um, kind of vibe and also with my band when I when it was still possible to play and when I was um, playing with my band I I was always going to uh, to play music for the audience really really can enjoy or mm -hmm. and even dance and dance uh, I never felt really comfortable I mean that's also beautiful but um, to play in a small club for for 10 or 20 people that's also beautiful but i also like when people are dancing in uh, front of the stage because that's also uh, that gives me also energy a lot of back. energy yeah exactly exactly yeah. exactly this this uh, well i i'm really curious if you're already planning any gigs um, as cautiously as that can happen right now but if there is anything on the horizon that you can share with us uh, yeah, there are a few things are actually actually already uh, cooking slowly. Yeah. Um, they will. I'm going to have my first uh, DJ set uh, on second of uh, July in Novi Sad, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was hoping that I can debut my EP already there, but uh, probably it's not going to happen. But it will happen in August, I hope. So yeah, then I will have my yeah, DJ set there. Uh, with trumpets, I also bring my trumpet, trumpet with my effects, and um, of course, I mean, yeah. Also, yeah uh, <laughs> Where it all started, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, mixing these two, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, there is um, next year already this year actually, but it's not really happening because of the pandemics. Uh, my hometown, Novisad, will be the capital of culture in Europe, and they, there is going to be a lot of things happening, of course, and. Um, uh, we got an offer to um, play there and also I suggested to then I would also invite uh, more musicians uh, who, are, uh, who are playing in this who are playing this kind of uh, music this kind of style so I will be I will be uh, play, I will play with my uh, band uh, definitely that will be uh, April next year so it's still mm -hmm. almost uh, almost a year but also my uh, friends uh, uh, ensemble, they will also play. They're playing um, quite uh, similar music and also some other um, uh, bit more famous um, DJs, producers as well. So it's going to be a bigger venue and it's going to be like two days. So I hope that will happen next and in the end of next uh, April. Uh, yes, and yeah. and the rest of the gigs, I'm yeah, I'm still um, um, planning. Uh, definitely during the summer, I will be in uh, Novi Sad in Serbia, and uh, I will book some um, uh, gigs there for sure. In August, I also also have um, one uh, date. What I what I got, uh, so I hope I can uh, perform with my band. But it's also a bit tricky because now the, it's very international. Everybody finished the conservatorium, so they are all around the place: Romania, mm. Slovenia, scattered uh, Germany. Around. Yeah, scattered around. That's right. But I hope that um, yeah, definitely more things will um, will happen, and um, and uh, that yeah. finally we can go back to the stage. And possibly also the already, Netherlands. Yes. It is already happening, yeah, with small cautious steps, but it is happening. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. about the Netherlands? Is there anything that maybe will come up? Uh, at the moment, I uh, really don't know. I'm playing on my uh, on my friend's final. That's for yeah. <laughs> so far. That's my only uh, uh, performing date uh, uh, in June great friend a great drummer so i will play on his final and uh, sampling and uh, playing the, the trumpet that's the only uh, thing we what will happen for now in holland and then uh, i don't know i'm also um, 
uh, in a middle of a transition now, so I might move, uh, or actually I'm for sure, I'm moving from Groningen. Um, and yeah, the, so I might be in Berlin already uh, in September. Ah. Uh, I, might, uh, I might move there. So yeah, for now, there are still a lot of things I have to find out. But I hope, of course, that I will... I will be on the stage again finally regularly yeah yeah i wish that i wish that for you and i actually hope that while you're still in the netherlands i can also meet you in person yeah and we yeah, can uh, nice. yeah we can connect before you go to berlin yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um Definitely. but uh, you know uh, we can i'm sure that we can speak for hours about all these uh, topics and i'm almost oh, feel yes. bad that everybody's attention i can imagine the audience anyone that's uh, listening right now uh, can be thinking a bit like mm, not sure if i have uh, enough uh, focus anymore to keep <laughs> keep listening connected to yeah. what we said earlier that people's focus yeah. is just going right. down yeah, the yeah. drain um and that's really a pity but i do hope that the people that are listening have found something to take something of yeah. value out of this because i really enjoy this conversation and um, yeah, i am um, even though we are now almost at the end of this uh, podcast episode i really want to ask you something else if it wasn't for music what do you think you would be doing right now is there something that could be a backup plan for you who uh I know what hard. I would. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a hard. Definitely, that's a hard one. Um, there is a thing I would uh, be very happy if I uh, could do that, but I'm afraid that I'm not uh, specialized in. Uh, Doesn't in that, matter. So. You can dream. Uh, you can just tell me something that. But if, if I can dream, then <laughs> yes, then you can dream. Uh, otherwise, if like if it's a, like a real thing, then I not no realistic. Idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Then yeah, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, I I uh, love history. I'm really that's basically was my hobby. I really love to uh, read about history, to read about yeah what happened, mm -hmm. and then I'm just you know um, trying to imagine when I read something in my head like how it could look like, and I'm really really um, into history. So probably okay, um, archaeologist. That um, that that I think that would be my yeah, dream job uh, hmm. besides music. Archaeologist Indiana, Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah, Indiana <laughs> nice. Jones vibes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that I I totally understand this because it it always seems so exciting the prospect of being an archaeologist and discovering something yeah. that has been there and people have. Yeah, it's connected to people that are so far back, going so far back from yeah. where you are at this moment and just imagining, you know, what it was at that exactly. time. Exactly. What kind of clothes did they wear and they were uh, standing on the same spot and you now, but 300 years ago. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's true. It's totally, uh, yeah. I think for me, it's really interesting to... Uh, think about uh, these things and yeah since I was a kid I was always digging holes and uh, trying to find something because also the area I'm from uh, uh, used to be the uh, part of the Roman Empire so there are a lot of yes. uh, things but I have to be a bit more concrete that it's uh, in um, old it was the you have the Danube River right so mm -hmm. the, the border was the river basically so it's from the other side but actually the Roman Empire uh, territory there are, there are a lot of things uh, people found uh, in, in those areas. So that's why since I was a kid, I was always digging and I was hoping that I will find something. <laughs> Maybe it's an idea for the pension scheme. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> after after <laughs> right. a couple of years, well, a lot more years, then you decide right. maybe you can, uh, I don't know, hit something very valuable and yeah. become an archaeologist by chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's see. 
let's see let's see there's still still time um okay but uh, Jot, before we finish this uh, talk for now i would be curious to know also what is your icebreaker question that you want to pose for our next guest oh yes i was expecting this one <laughs> yeah um, so you prepared uh <laughs> Actually, now during the, conver uh, the the conversation, because yeah, when you uh, asked me, then I was uh, um, uh, I found out that probably I have to ask one as well. So it's going to be extremely um, tricky one. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just joking. No, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not I'm fair. curious if it's very so tricky. So it's um, <laughs> no. Uh, let's let me see. Um, um, is she or he? has some kind of a ritual before uh, a concert, before performing. What uh, a lovely question. I almost yeah. wish that I asked it to you. <laughs> hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. Before or after. But it needs to be a yeah, uh, ritual connected with the, with the concert. With the performance. Performance, yeah. Hmm, right. very good one. I will also it's think about one, that right? for myself. <laughs> yeah, really, really good yeah. one. Thanks. Thanks <laughs> nice. for this one. And, and thanks so much for being a guest with the Stellar Sound yeah, podcast. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for inviting. Yeah, you will really... definitely, you will definitely, well, not you, we will make sure that we have your links to any kind of music that uh, our listeners can check out. From you, you and also if they can connect Request. to you socially yeah perfect perfect we'll post that. sounds sounds good <laughs> great thanks again very much have a lovely evening thank and, you very much uh, you too you stay too. tuned for the next episodes everybody thank you for being with us bye bye